As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Revelation chapter 3, verse 19. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Well, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, this video I am correcting an error that was in my 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 expository video that the Lord gave me. I made an error and a pillar of the Church of the Living God, uh, bless his heart and soul, pointed this out to me. And praise the Lord, praise the Lord for his correction. You see, I'm accountable unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And I'm going to give an account for everything that has come uh, that he has guided me on to do. Okay? And um, I am also accountable unto you, my brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God. And um, I made an error. And like I said, a pillar of the Church of the Living God shoot me my error. And this video is addressing that error. And um, we're going to go over it. Go to, in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The error is uh, uh, pertaining onto the day of Christ. Okay? Now, for example, the day of the Lord is defined by the context in which it appears. You cannot use a blanket definition for the day of the Lord. It is defined by its context, okay? Same with the day of Christ, okay? For example, when you look in Philippians chapter 1 and Philippians chapter 2, the other appearances of the day of Christ within the Pauline epistles, the day of Christ only appears three times in the scriptures and all three times within the Pauline epistles. Twice in Philippians in chapter 1 and 2 and right here in verse 2 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And it's defined by the context, okay? I'll give you an example. That devil, John MacArthur, okay? where in the scriptures our Lord would have servant, and what, whatever the Greek word is, I, I don't know, I don't care. John MacArthur has said and teaches that the Greek word that our Lord put in the scriptures as servant ought to be slave in every occurrence, okay? Thus giving credence onto Calvinism. And Calvinism, as we all know, is rank heresy, okay? But it is defined by the context, okay? So, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, let us read on to, from verse 1 on to verse 8, okay? Follow me along in the scriptures. We begin. Now we beseech you, brethren... By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Reference unto the catching away, okay? That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, already happening, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. 
Now, here is the error. In that video, I said unto you that I believe that the day of Christ here in 2 Thessalonians is referencing onto the catching away. Okay, I told you that. I said that's what I believe that is. I don't believe that is true. I don't believe that is accurate. And I am uh, confessing unto you I made an error and um, praise the Lord for the pillar of the church that corrected me on this. Praise the Lord for it. Here's the problem. Okay, here's the problem. Look at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, which is already happening, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. What's the problem? If the day of Christ in verse 2 is referring on to the catching away, then according to verse 3, that would mean that you and I, as the church of the living God, are going to see the son of perdition. Okay? If the day of Christ in verse 2 is referring on to the catching away. Remember, the day of Christ, the day of the Lord, is defined by the context in which it appears. You read on your own time, uh, Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 2, where the occurrences of the day of Christ appear, you will see that it's obviously referring on to the catching away. But here, but here in verse 2, if this in verse 2 Okay, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. If that is the catching away, then according to verse 3, that means we would see the son of perdition. Okay, hold on one second. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to show you something. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We will be reading verses 11 on to verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 11 on to verse 19. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. We are part of his bones and of his flesh. Okay? Of these things put in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, being dispensational. Okay? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. The resurrection is past already, meaning the catching away already happened. Okay? Verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ departeth from iniquity. Okay? And when you go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, uh, verse 2 and 3, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Again, as we saw in 2 Timothy chapter 2, the Thessalonian believers were under the impression, 
We miss the resurrection. We miss the catching away. We're in the time of Jacob's trouble. They thought that it had already happened. They were under they were being told that hey, it had already happened. We're going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? That is what um, Paul is addressing here. So as that the day of Christ is at hand cannot be it doesn't work. It cannot that occurrence right there that the day of Christ is at hand cannot be referencing the catching away. It can't be. Because, now let's continue reading now from verse 4 on to verse 8. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told, thee, told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Okay, now check this out. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The body of Christ. Okay, we are his bones and flesh. We are connected to the Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father our Lord Jesus Christ is omnipresent. He's not going to leave the earth, okay? He's going to be pouring his wrath upon the earth for seven years during the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? We get taken out, verse 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. We leave, okay? And then shall that wicked be revealed. We go up, and then shall that wicked be revealed. The son of perdition. Okay? We go up, son of perdition. Okay? Is it right away? Is it like immediate? Maybe, maybe not. But the point is, we go up, and then that wicked shall be revealed. You and I as the church of the living God will not be seeing the son of perdition being revealed. We will not see the son of perdition. Okay? So then, again, when it comes to verse 2, as that, as that the day of Christ is at hand, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, comma, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. As that day of Christ is at hand, in context at what we just looked at, and keeping in mind verses 7 and 8, that he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, Church of the living God, the body of Christ, and then shall that wicked be revealed. The day of Christ in verse 2 is referring on to the second coming. Because, it, it, look at it, it cannot be referring on to the catching away. Because if it were, then you would have a contradiction, wouldn't you? And God's word the scriptures do not contradict, do they? Do they? And like I said, the day of the Lord, the day of Christ, is defined within the context in which it appears. You cannot blanket it, blanket it with a single definition. You can't. You would be in error. I was in error on that. The day of Christ in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, cannot be referring on to the catching away. It cannot be. In this occurrence of the day of Christ within the context is referring on to the second coming. Because verses 7 and 8. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. Okay? We go up, 
and then that wicked shall be revealed, the son of perdition. Okay? So, again, in verse 2, the day of Christ has to be referring on to the second coming in that context. Whereas the day of Christ in Philippians chapter 1 and 2 is clearly referring on to the catching away. It's defined by the context. It's not a blanketed meaning for every occurrence. Okay? That leads to error. Okay? So, thank you on to the pillar of the church that um, corrected me. Thank you on to the Lord Jesus Christ for, uh, for as many as he loves... He rebukes and chastens. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And like I said, brothers, sisters, I'm accountable unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am accountable unto you. I made an error. Please forgive me of my error. And thank you unto uh, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, and unto the pillar of the Church of the Living God, who pointed out. Uh, my error in the most loving way possible. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. And also, too, I want to uh, just address unto all of you, all of you, who have shown great charity unto the least of all men, the least of all saints, a sinner who is chief, your servant. Thank you very much, brother, sisters, church of the living God. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.